Take your time. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Cafecito con Colón on the Sabado Gigante. Got a great guest for you, Mr. Clarence Smith, former chief of staff to James B. Lewis. Get All started right. here in just a moment. Okay. It's a beautiful morning in New Mexico, Tierra del Encanto. Right here on this Sabido Gigante, the 18th day of July. Buenos dias, Adrián, Alfonso. Good to see you this morning. Thanks for those great pictures. Can't wait to have you on next week, Alfonso, on Thursday on Cafecito con Colón. All right, all right, all right. Well, we're coming off a big 17th day of July, the anniversary of the birth of my wife. We had a great birthday celebration Thank you to Don Orlando Marquez Versace Mariachi, uh, Mariachi Tierra del Encanto. Uh, Orlando came over and serenaded my bride, sang her just a beautiful rendition of Las Mañanitas. And uh, what a great way to start her birthday. And we just had a great time there after we got, uh, uh, again, Lisa, uh, made me look terrific. She brought over the most beautiful floral arrangement uh, to celebrate Aleli's birthday. Thank you, Lisa. Appreciate you very much. And uh, uh, was uh, just a wonderful. Hey, we've got a birthday boy on with us. He just finished celebrating Willie Marquez. Everybody knows and loves Willie Marquez. Uh, Willie, I'm glad you're able to join us this morning. It is good to see you. Hope you had a beautiful birthday celebration. I posted up one or two quick comments to you and hopefully you got them because I know you got hundreds of birthday accolades because everybody loves Willie. Willie and I have been friends for almost 30 years and uh, that's hard to believe, uh, but he's always been a wonderful uh, friend and a light in my life. And I want to say welcome, Willie, uh, to Cafecito con Colón. Good morning, Don Antonio Cruz coming at us from the north. Dick, uh, glad to see you this morning, and Anique, welcome back to Cafecito con Colón. And uh, we got Gene Grant with us this morning, tuning in to learn a little bit more about the wonderful journey of Mr. Clarence Smith, uh, who's been a tremendous, tremendous Albuquerque, essentially a native from the time he was a baby boy. He was one year old when he got here from uh, Oklahoma, and he has made an impact and continues to make a difference in a community that he loves, that is Albuquerque and the greater area here in New Mexico. So uh, let's get started up with uh, some uh, links this morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, Jim Buhag. Hey, it's great to see Jim out there. Jim has been on the road to recovery. We want him 100%. Uh, he is a cherished, cherished friend, an incredible uh, man who served our country with distinction and continues to serve his community by always being a great advocate. So Jim, lots of love to you. Uh, it's great to see you. Give my best to Lynn. Damian Lara, good to see you this morning as well. We got some great folks coming on this morning. Tommy Brooks, good to see you. Uh, Tommy sending his love there, Clarence. You, you got lots of, lots of folks out here looking forward to hearing about your journey. So let me start out with a couple of uh, uh, national pieces here. Uh, I, I've been, 
you know that I follow the website, The Conversation. They always have some really well-researched and interesting pieces. Uh, this particular post uh, uh, is about research on voting by mail and the, indicate, the indications are what we would expect, or at least what I would expect, that voting by mail is not only safe uh, um, from <clears throat> a health and well-being standpoint, but also safe from fraud. fraud. And as your state auditor, I'm always fighting waste, fraud, and abuse. So we love the vote by mail program. Check out that story after Cafecito. And also in my role as auditor, we have been doing a lot of education about uh, cyber uh, security and cyber terrorism. And this is an interesting story. Uh, if you've heard about ransom attacks and ransomware, uh, which New Mexico has been impacted, and we've had millions of dollars worth of resources have to go into fighting, combating, and recovering from ransomware attacks. So uh, I know you've probably heard about ransomware, but maybe you don't know a lot about it. And I thought I would share that information with you this morning, again, through the conversation. I want to take a minute to blow up uh, a great leadership academy that happens during the summer. This is the first time they're doing it outdoors uh, because of COVID-19, but the uh, New Mexico Black History Organizing Committee has hosted and led Roots Summer Leadership Academy for a few years, and they do an amazing job. I went out there and uh, uh, I got to see some children that I know very well, like Patrick's uh, children uh, uh, are enriched by this camp. And uh, I wanted to post up that information there. It started on the 13th, so it started this week. I went out there, enjoyed visiting with those kids. Uh, they're just tremendous, and it is a tremendous opportunity you can still sign your children up. Uh, they've, got, they've got some virtual experience and then some hands-on experience out there at the camp. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, let's see here. In terms of local community, oh, let me, let me blow up one other. Uh, oh, here's some great pictures from the drum workshop that I found. Uh, thank you, Kathy McGill, for making sure that I'm on your uh, mailing list for your great camp. I just love this. Uh, but these are awesome pictures from the, from the drum workshop that uh, you will enjoy. Uh, so, okay, and then the other thing I wanted to tell you about in terms of our social profit sector, uh, everybody's changing it up. I mean, every nonprofit social profit in New Mexico has had to change up their development approach. And people like Damian and I, uh, we go to these galas, uh, it seems like every weekend together. And uh, of course, in-person galas are not on the agenda for this, this uh, year. And so social profits and nonprofits have really done a good job of trying to pivot, right? How do we spell pandemic? P-I-V-O-T, pivot. And Wings for Life International, which I love the work they do. They do prison outreach, ministry, transition, um, phenomenal, phenomenal organization. And has built that organization into a hugely impactful um, life work, um, but they are doing a, a uh, treasured site hunt. And uh, there's the flyer for it. Here's the main landing page for it in case you wanna learn about that. Hey, I wanna make sure my sound is okay this morning. Uh, I've got a little bit of a, a frog in my throat, but <clears throat> let me know if you can hear me okay. There's the information for Anne's uh, effort there uh, with the treasured site hunt. Uh, let's see here. What else do I have for you? Then we're going to bring Clarence on in just a few minutes here. Oh, this was a great story about a brother and sister. So uh, this six-year-old brother uh, was with his little sister, and she was uh, about to be attacked by a dog. Um, and he thought that if somebody had to die by, uh, by way of that dog attack, he was going to be the one that was going to die. And just you just can't imagine what was going through that little boy's head. Um, but uh, Bridger Walker uh, out of Wyoming uh, really saved his sister's life, his little sister's life, uh, when uh, they were attacked by this German shepherd mix. Uh, his sister was four years old. Anyway, the story went viral. And, uh, and, and then Anne Hathaway and uh, Chris Evans and all these superhero actors and actresses reached out to give this child accolades um, and congratulate him on, on his act of bravery. And so CNN picked up that story and I thought it was awesome. Um, I hope you enjoy that. 
let's see here. What else do I have for you that I wanted to? Oh, you know what? Uh, somebody asked me if I knew where to get the uh, United masks because everybody knows I'm a big United fan. Where's my United? There's my New Mexico, New Mexico United there. Uh, they asked where to get the United mask, and I have the landing page for you on that. Uh, Karen, I'm sorry the the video is free, freezing up on you a little bit. Uh, Rebecca, thanks for the feedback on the sound. But there's where you can get all, and they have. I've only I had only seen like um, one, and uh, they have everything from skull cap coverings to to the face masks uh, to the adult children. New Mexico logo, United logo, just awesome, awesome, awesome. It comes United all the way across. Beautiful, beautiful. I I, uh, I posted up a clip on uh, my Twitter feed, uh, and uh, because Peter Trevisani was being interviewed yesterday on 770, uh, and he was talking about, you know, they they had to cancel their home game, and but they've done two road games. They had a win, and then they had uh, they had a draw, and. Uh, and they said, well, will we have any home games? He said, well, I don't really know. He said, but if it means that we're on the road for the whole season, if that's what it takes to bring home a cup, that's what we're going to do for Albuquerque. And so he's just such a phenomenal human being. I love Peter T. And uh, anyway, buy, buy a United face mask, support the team during this time. Uh, another cool national story that was picked up by KRQE on their good news, 99-year-old uh, uh, woman who, rec uh, she's a, she's, uh, 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 what do they call it? Oh, a spunky great grandma. Uh, but she recovered from COVID-19. Great story there. Uh, you can see her, uh, just a million dollar smile. And then her grandson has just an equal smile and uh, just awesome a woman out of Michigan. Um, let's see here. Oh, and the governor, uh, Dr. Scray, Secretary Scray came out yesterday, talked a little bit about the return to school program. He's briefing the governor next week on that to make some final decisions about PED's approach and plan. Uh, let me give you one other local story. I just uh, thought it was of interest that uh, New Mexico's uh, and here in Albuquerque, they're working to do some hotel conversions to uh, provide shelter for our homeless during this COVID-19 and implementing some interesting procedures there to make sure everyone is protected. So before I, before I bring on our dear friend and we're right on schedule, I love it, it's 9-11 and uh, I wanted to post up a couple of quick things. One, uh, a couple of stories on USA Today. One about uh, doing the work uh, for anti-racism. It's no longer enough to, to just be able to stand up and say, I'm not a racist, but we have to be anti-racism uh, as we have learned. And I have posted so many stories and links about that and I, I finally ordered uh, uh, the good doctor's book uh, stamped from birth or stamped from the beginning. I'm looking forward to that arriving on Monday, I think. Uh, but uh, that is a good story uh, uh, about doing some of this anti-racism work. And then, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about this morning uh, was mental health. And there's a, a good story on USA Today about helping seniors stay mentally healthy. You know, I've got one of my dearest loved ones in my life is my adopted mom. Uh, she is uh, an incredible, incredible woman and she's as sharp as ever. She's an independent living. She's got her little casita and she's doing wonderfully well. Um, but uh, this was a great story about taking care of your elderly parents and uh, that led me to another story that is really pretty, uh, pretty comprehensive about making sure we watch for the signs of people who may be having suicidal uh, tendencies or ideation of uh, suicide and uh, just some great links to things to say, not to say, resources approaches and things of that nature. And so I wanted to post that up. And so with that, the last story I wanna post before bringing on our own icon in Albuquerque when it comes to civil rights and being a leader in our state uh, who is also a black man uh, with really strong opinions and a strong ability to carry a message 
I wanted to post up what I found to be the best landing page to a story that was a tribute to an icon, the conscience of Congress, an incredible leader, John Robert Lewis, Congressman Lewis, who as a young man of, I think he was 24 and probably Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is probably 30 or 32, because we know he was always much younger than we kind of think of him to have been during the civil rights movement. But he heard him speak and he was deeply moved and became incredibly engaged in the civil rights movement and then went on to serve in Congress with distinction and uh, pass civil rights acts and bills. Uh, he passed away from pancreatic cancer. You might recall that about eight months ago, he announced that he had stage four pancreatic cancer. I don't know anybody else in my world that has survived for eight months after being diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer, but he had such spirit and such fight and uh, was truly amazing, was out there uh, in the streets marching with the mayor of Washington, D.C. Uh, as recently as uh, I think just last month. In fact, it was last month, I'm sure of it. Uh, and he uh, at, a, at a Black Lives Matter uh, protest. And he was really amazing. Uh, but this, 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 if you wanna, if you want a good page to, to, to take a look at his life work and his legacy, please check out this Washington Post. They, they brought it in front of the paywall. Uh, thank you, Damian. Um, and I hope you'll take a look at that. Uh, truly, truly heavy. Marjorie, thanks for joining me this morning. She sends her love, Clarence. Uh, thank you, Dick, for that comment. Thank you for your service. Uh, but this, that, that, that Washington Post piece has a very powerful two, three minute clip about uh, that they a montage of John R. Lewis in his own words and very, very, very heavy. Served in Congress for 30, 30 years, 30 plus years. So check that out. So look, let me, uh, so my condolences to the Lewis family, my condolences to the country because we have lost a giant and the conscience of Congress uh, with the passing of John Lewis. You'll, those of you that follow me closely know that a week ago I put up, uh, because I have a friend that works very closely with his team, and I knew a week ago uh, that he was, he was in his end stages. And uh, unfortunately, right about the same time as the Congresswoman got bad staffing information, I think, and posted that she had offered condolences. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't remember, was it Twain? The rumors of my death are greatly exaggerated. Uh, and that's what happened with Congressman Lewis. He still had some life left in him, um, but we do offer our condolences and gratitude for a man who made the country a better place and made Congress a more thoughtful place. So let me bring on our great guest of honor today at 915 this morning. He was born in Oklahoma and quickly found his way to the land of enchantment. He was one year old, grew up in the Kirtland edition that we've talked about here on Cafecito Con Colon, a great uh, pocket of diversity and of uh, a place that raised many great social advocates and black voices that continue to make a difference in our community to this day. He is a very proud Raven. He graduated from Rio Grande High School and then went straight over to Fortales, New Mexico, which I'm sure was a little bit of a change. I'll let him speak to that a little bit. Got his bachelor's in business administration back in 1990, oh no, excuse me, 1975. Uh, I was just starting kindergarten there, Clarence. Uh, so we were both getting our next step in education in 1975. Uh, he has done so many great things. He's, he's not just a mental giant, but he's also a giant with his hands. He was out there in the field as an electrician with his family business for many years uh, and did great work as an electrician. Very proud member and great advocate for our union sisters and brothers. He is a proud member of IBEW, uh, and then also is a Mason. So if Alex Flores, you're listening in this morning, uh, you got your proud Mason brother here. Uh, and he's a, he is a leader and a national officer, I believe in the Macedonian uh, Mission Baptist Church, right, Clarence? Uh, the Macedonian Missionary Baptist Church, the association is the National Baptist Convention of America, INC. Where See, Dr. I, Talbert is our yeah, president. I did. I, I didn't, that's a big mouthful. I only had half of that. Yeah, that's okay. I ain't mad at I, you. 
<laughs> Thank you. I also know that that for for me, he has been a guiding hand in my engagement and my participation with the NAACP. He's a lifelong and lifetime member of the NAACP. And I knew him best because on my journey in civil service and in public service in the political landscape in New Mexico, I knew that we had a strong civil servant who always seemed to be right at the elbow of and providing expertise and guidance to my mentor uh, in public service, James B. Lewis. And James, love you a lot. I'm gonna give you a shout out. Thank you for touching base with me. We're gonna have James on Cafecito con Colón um, here in the near future. We've been sending our condolences regularly to him as he processes through the, the life of, of his, his first love, his mama. Um, and uh, we, we send our condolences again to James. Uh, but, but Clarence worked all the way from the front end to the back end with James. He started out with James in 2006 and finished his uh, service with James as chief of staff. Uh, so he quickly rose through the ranks uh, because James saw talent and celebrated that black excellence and kept it by his side the whole time. And I wanna say it's a privilege and an honor to bring on yet another great friend of mine and somebody who's given me great advice over the years. And I wanna say, Clarence, thanks for your friendship. Thanks for agreeing to come on Cafecito con Colón on this Sabido Gigante with Clarence, Clarence L. Smith. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Brian, and, and uh, God bless you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I, I wanna start off, Brian, with, with a little statement. I, I, you mentioned my church, Macedonian Missionary Baptist Church, which I've been a member. Uh, we just celebrated a 66th anniversary this month. Uh, and I go to Sunday school on a regular basis. Uh, there, this last Sunday, we had a, in our Sunday school lesson, had, we never stopped growing in wisdom. We never stopped growing in wisdom. And we can learn what is wise in our Father's house, as well as in our earthly ones. What is required if we want to grow in wisdom is paying close attention to those around us who are trying to share with us uh, uh, with us what is wise, carefully comparing what we hear with God's word to make sure it is, uh, it is consistent with what he says is wise and then doing what God says is wise. Um, how can we grow in wisdom this week in our father's house or in our earthly one? I just want to say that because I want to start off. You had mentioned my humble beginnings in Oklahoma City, uh, born in uh, University Hospital right across the street from where the Oklahoma bombing was. I visited some years ago, uh, and that's uh, if you ever get a chance, we'll check out that memorial. It is it is moving to see what 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 one person or group of people can do to destroy the lives of, of so many uh, in Oklahoma City. Uh, and then, you know, after a year, born in 1953, moved here. Uh, one year later, my family picked up. My grandparents were already here in 1951, I believe, but we moved here in 50. Uh, I was here in 54. Uh, so I, in essence, I know where the bodies are buried. Uh, <laughs> and, and you're going to say, uh, you know, I was graduated from Rio Grande High School, moved on to my education, further my education for Calus, New Mexico, uh, Eastern New Mexico University. I have a lot of my fellow greyhounds on Home of the Hounds. Uh, yes, we know sir. how that is. And, and it had it was a cultural shock because we only had about, well, maybe 150 African Americans on campus there. And we didn't have a black community in Portales. We had to, we want to go to church on Sundays. We had to get people to bus to, to pick us up to take us to uh, uh, the area churches in in Clovis, New Mexico, and that's where we. I, that's where I really got involved with the NACP, and I, I I I say that because back in the day in 1972, uh, you had Ronnie Ronnie Wallace on, and he was talking about the UNM boycott. Well, 1972, Eastern New Mexico had an African American uh, athletic boycott, and um, we didn't have that many. We had about all oh, 15 uh, football players, black. We had seven basketball players. 
approximately uh, five baseball players and three or four cross country and uh, about uh, six or seven good tracks, tracks. Well, they decided to boycott because their treatment by the coaches and the athletic staff there. Uh, and one day we decided the non-athletic students was going to have uh, in our support of the athletes, we were going to have a one day sit out. Well, they got the, the administration got wind of it and they threatened to suspend us. Uh, knowing that we were kind of worried and concerned, but it was the group of uh, clergymen from Clovis, along with the president of the NACP met with the president of Eastern Mexico. And, you know, they come to some agreement that we'll have our one day protest in support of the black athletes there. Well, I, from that day on, I was just involved heavily with the NACP. Like I said, I got a life subscribing member, membership and, and continue on. Uh, a lot of our civil rights icons uh, were part of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in the, in the NAACP. Uh, another individual that you uh, died just a day before uh, Representative John Lewis was Reverend Cordy uh, Tyndale, uh, C.T. Vivian. He was a civil rights uh, work as the lieutenant with Martin Luther King organizing and um, freedom rides and the voter education drives. He once uh, uh, was beat as he entered a courthouse by one of the uh, one of the sheriffs. In, in the South. So, so these are the, you know, we're having a lot of these older icons leaving us, um, but we must uh, continue on with that wisdom, with that knowledge and understanding. Uh, uh, I, I, I can't recall what uh, uh, Representative John Lewis said and, and make, make your, uh, what is a good, uh, 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 Oh, I don't know. It's a good something. Somebody might know that that phrase that uh, Representative John Lewis said. But anyway, uh, there's there's a there's your first challenge on Capacito con Colón. Find the <laughs> quote that uh, uh, Representative yeah. Lewis said there regarding yeah. making making your good yeah. count. Yeah, yeah, you make it good. So. Hey, we got a lot of good people here watching you this morning, Clarence. You got Marcus Porter came on, and uh -huh. and uh -huh. uh, uh, Dick Wilson, our our good veterano, and and. Clovis Baca, Denise Lee's with us this morning. We got we got some great folks that tuned in this morning. Of course, Dr. Roybal came on to see you. You know he loves great, you. great, great, great. Tell us tell us a little bit, uh, Clarence, and 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 we can talk about whatever you like. But I I, I okay. definitely want to get a sense for, you know, you grew up in that Kirtland edition and went to those schools and then over to to Rio Grande. Tell us a little bit about what it was like to grow up in Albuquerque in the '70s. Yeah, uh, or, um, you know, you know, graduating in '75, so you know, in the '60s and '70s. Yeah, uh, '60s and '70s. Man. Well, you know, the '60s and '70s. When we look at back, we, we had a lot going on worldwide, uh, nationwide. Uh, we had a we had a uh, well, we had the Vietnam War. Uh, that experience was something I, I worked at. Uh, a lot of people know the uh, it was Shoprite food, otherwise known as Piggly Wiggly's, in the South Broadway area. I worked there. I remember there the Piggly. I remember the Piggly food. Wiggly. Yeah, I was I was a sacker there, and and, and you know it was a uh, it was a touching story that one of the sackers that trained me, uh, James Willard, he trained me, and and he was getting ready to be shipped off to Vietnam. Inside a year, he was he was killed in Vietnam. So it touched my heart. Uh, Drastic. Hey Clarence, while you're while you're thinking about yeah. those paper bags that used to give you paper cuts at the Piggly Wiggly while you were bagging, uh, yeah, uh, we got we got a winner. Of course, Pam Davis. Uh, is it good trouble? Is necessary trouble? Right. Good trouble is necessary trouble. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Thank Pam. You, Pam. Yes, Thank you, Pam. Good trouble. Thank you, Pam. Yeah. Yes, yeah they indeed. mentioned that this morning on, on on the news when they was giving him all them accolades. Good trouble. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, it was just one of those things in the 60s, as I was saying, being raised here, uh, we wouldn't, we would just go to church, go to school, do what we, our parents wanted us to do. And, and my, my dad, he was an electrician at Sandia uh, National Laboratories back, back then before he started his business. 
Uh, then we, in 64, we moved in South Valley, Los Padillas. That uh, uh, was way down in South Valley. Uh, and I was uh, kind of brought up there. I met a lot of good people, Hispanics, uh, Anglos, uh, Native Americans. And we had such a, such a wonderful time as we grew up through, through the ranks. You know, I, I started off at, uh, at Los Padillas and then we went to, I went to Harris, Harrison. Uh, junior high for, for a couple of years and then they built a new school junior high poke uh Polk. first uh, middle school junior high there for a year then we went to, i went to rio grande and and we just kept meeting uh people of color white black uh brown red you know we met them all we 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 all uh we had our differences, we, you know. We always agreed to disagree, but but we got along. I mean, we got along, and 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 that's that's my impression of the world that I was raised in. Now it was totally different when maybe I got down to Eastern New Mexico, when the cultural shock it was it it wasn't a, a big black community, but we were we united. We stayed together. We, we we did our thing as far as getting our education. Um, uh, you know, my, <laughs> I had some friends from Portales, uh, like Tommy Brooks and, 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 and the Collins brothers, Lyle and, and Frank, when, one year, I, one weekend I went to down to Hobbs, well, down in that area where I got a chance to see Soul Train. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I mean, I, that. <laughs> it was really something to see all these, all these brothers and sisters dancing and everything and, and then we came back, we used to have our little parties and dances at our, at our dormitory, and we used to have a soul train line. Well, you know, we had a good time back then, but uh, it was just, everybody used to get along. I, I Not knowing what I knew then, uh, but it was a little change when, let's say my mom was from Oklahoma City, we used to go back every year and visit uh, my 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 relative. How is be, let let's let's pause on the Oklahoma City because I want to hear okay. about that. But can you tell us you're in Portales? Okay. Not very many African Americans, especially not very many African Americans who aren't on the uh, athletics teams that you talked about. Yeah. Do yeah. this protest and then you do a sit out or what do you you know you you, you boycott yeah. classes. Mm -hmm. How was that received in the community at large there at, at Eastern? Well. In, and maybe and, even in Portales generally. Yeah. Talk, talk well, a little bit about that, because I think that was an interesting time. Well, you know, like I said, we uh, being on campus, we, we we got the we got the news, uh, or said that if we not a threat, but if we if we did uh, protest, we would get suspended and and all this stuff. I guess it did make news because my parents called me, said, you know, <laughs> what's going on down there? What what, what y'all doing there? <laughs> no, it was. It was a little, 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 little concerned, but uh, we we went on through it. Uh, you know, we we didn't. We were gonna do what we want to do. Uh, uh, we met as as the students, and and and, and we just everyone voiced their opinion. And uh, I don't know. It was just we went through with what we had to go through. And, and was there any backlash? A, Clarence? No. Well, there was. After the fact, after everything kind of cool, a lot of the athletes left the following year and it did come down. The new African Americans, the ones that they recruited in the future, was told not to get involved with any black organizations or they will lose their scholarships. Or, you know, it was it was a threat. Uh, it was a threat to the to the athletes. And I think that was uh, it was just that backlash, I think, uh, trying to control the uh, trying to control the athletes. Back then, if you, you need to do what you were told and you don't have a scholarship. Uh, and that, that, was, uh, that was that. And now I, I myself, uh, I had work study. I had, I had other uh, bills to get me through my education. My parents paid what they could. And, uh, you know, I came out. I came out okay, I, I feel. I got a, a perhaps a business administration degree and moved on, you know. So, I mean, back then, they, they took up the streets, the lights and everything at dark 30. So, 
Yeah. You know, you get they up rolled, in the morning. They rolled and up the streets. Roll up the streets. In the morning, you got the farm report. You didn't get anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had well, to live with it. <laughs> that's great. That's great. You got the the farm report as they're rolling out the streets again, right? Yeah, yeah. In the morning, I love it. in the morning. So tell, so, it, yeah. tell us. I, I I definitely want to come back to that bookmark on on Oklahoma because okay. I suspect yeah. that that that's probably a pretty heavy experience. What was that like going back back? Well, to where you're you know, like I said, when 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 that's coming up, you didn't really paid much attention to it. Now your uncles talked about, your uncles talked about the bombing in Tulsa and how they dropped bombs on, on, on Black Wall Street. Well, fast forward, now that you hear about all that, now that 45 has made an attempt to, to go to Tulsa at the time, uh, and and it was, it was, then he's talking about, you know, I'm, I make a Juneteenth well known. Well, no, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't make nothing well known, you know. So, so that's a that's another another tale we can go over sometime, maybe in not too distant future. But, but uh, hopefully we'll get him out of there in November. Uh, but, but that was crucial. And 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 my uncles and and they talked about it all the time. And I said, wow, that's that's really something. At a at a young age, uh, we didn't pay much attention to it. We just heard our uncles talk about it, and that's it. Uh, but now that you, was that, in 19, 1921. 21, uh, was 21. That, yeah. Was uh -huh. that bombing uh -huh. and exactly. uh, 600, 600 people, I think, ended up in the hospital. Yeah. Um, got got and, messed uh, Just, and, just. Awful, and you know, awful. a long time, a long time, the legislature, the Oklahoma legislature, they want to talk about, didn't want to bring it up. They finally start bringing it up. And I believe just, just recently, uh, the survivors, which is in their hundreds, are getting a little restitution about you know about that, but it was it was bad. It, it was one of those cases that that uh, the black community was really strong back then. Black Wall Street, and they weren't going to take what what the whites was doing to them uh, based on what happened. Uh, just yeah, just to just to be clear, I, I misspoke. I, I actually looked it up just now. It, there yeah. were. 800 people were admitted to hospitals and as many as 6,000 black residents were uh, interned at large facilities, many for several days. And the yeah. Oklahoma Bureau of Vital Statistics officially recorded 36 dead, 26 uh, blacks and 10 whites uh, were confirmed dead uh, yeah. based on the autopsy reports and death certificates. And just yeah. that massacre uh, was over Memorial Day weekend, uh, mm. just incredible incredible so yeah. if you don't know about the tulsa race massacre i actually you, saw some really powerful clips on a couple of the netflix movies i've been watching and and uh, exactly. if you haven't tuned into the to the black lives matter section on netflix they've got just a great there's there's some great great shows there i watched a four poor uh, four or five part uh series on malcolm x learned a ton knew nothing i mean what i knew was nothing compared to what I know now, and yeah. uh, in terms of his life, and and uh, fascinating, fascinating. But anyway, yeah, yeah I just yeah. want to get that. that. So yeah, you have that backdrop, simple. and you go back uh -huh. to uh -huh. Oklahoma uh, in the in the sixties and seventies. What was yeah, that like? every 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 year? Well, it was it was one of those situations when we go to Oklahoma, we didn't see any white folks. We all we were just in a black community. You, you, you go to the grocery store, it's all black. You go to the banks, all but You know, it, it was that community was really something. My mom wanted me to go to Langston University uh, in Oklahoma City. My dad said, no, we're not going to do that. So I ended up going to East New Mexico and Patala. But, uh, you know, it, it, was, uh, it, it, it was very nice to be around uh, and comfortable around my, my, uh, my, uh, relatives and and knowing that we had a good time back then uh, all during my childhood we went at least once uh once a year when i got in in in, in college uh, i went back quite frequently i wasn't too far from you know from down in portales to oklahoma city so a couple of times i went you know weekend when i had my vehicle uh, I used to drive there, visit my grandmother on the weekends and stuff like that. So, I had a, so Clarence, I had a, Clarence, on uh, when when we're little and we get transferred from one school to another, we want to, we wish we were with our friends. 
and we're sad we, yeah. we transferred schools or whatever. I wonder for you, did you or Pamela, did you did you all ever get the sense where that feeling in your heart where you go, man, we're going to visit where my family and my black community is. I'm so comfortable. I love it here. I wish my family would move here so I could be surrounded with people that look like me. Instead, I have to go back to Albuquerque um, where I'm the exception, not the rule when I walk into any room. Did you ever have well, those kinds of emotions you know, or feelings? You know, back, back then my dad had that opportunity to interview a job there in Oklahoma City with the electric company. Uh, but he, he changed his mind. Uh, I don't know if he did get the get the call to do it but we knew he he went on an interview and uh you know we we, we was excited because we used to oh yeah daddy might might get a job here in oklahoma we moved back there man it just it was just really something but the bubble was busted when we found out he was gonna stay at sandia labs so so, <laughs> so that was the end of that story but you know it's, as a whole we did we did good i mean I, I'm Brian. I'm truly blessed. And I, you mentioned my sister Pam Davis, uh, mm -hmm. and you know her quite well. You're great. You know when I said, "Hey, you know Brian, come on." Oh yeah, we. I know Brian. He, him and his family. You introduced him when she used to come down to you, to the uh, to the flea market down there in Berlin. That's all she talked about. I think you started her mm -hmm. because she did. Uh, her and her husband. Robert, that's all they do on the weekends is go to the, <laughs> go to these garage sales and everything. That's all she talk about. And let me just say one note about my sister. I was a, an, a, an official with uh, uh, football back in back some time ago, and I was officiating a game at Berlin and Los Lunas down in Berlin, and it was a junior uh, varsity game one afternoon, and, and these these Los Lunas players got in a little scuffle with the with the Berlin players and I broke it up and I said, you know, cause I was a, I was a umpire in the middle of the line there in internal line. I told those Los Luz players, I said, you guys better straighten up. I'm going to tell Miss Davis on you. <laughs> I said, you, you know, Miss Davis. I said, yeah, that's my sister. Oh man, Miss Davis is the bomb. We had this and that. And she was just so great. So when I told my sister, I told who it was cause I knew the names of the players. You just say, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get on it when I see him in class. But it's, it's funny, you, you can't go in Los Angeles Berlin unless somebody know the Davis family. And okay. and you know, they got a son that, that had gone to Eastern Richard, had that had that that uh, severe uh, car accident. Now he's he's uh in a wheelchair and all and, and my I just I just pray every day and, and just my sister's really blessed my sister and brother in law. And, and how he stepped up and, and, and is taking care of Richard. We all rally behind him and, and, and oh, do something else. So. Well, Pam's, a, Pam's a, 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 a source of joy wherever she goes. She, uh, I mean, yep. whether it's leading the, the student leaders at Los Lunas uh, in the mm -hmm. student government or whether it's in the classroom, uh, she, is, she is cherished. And uh, I have nothing but love uh, and fond recollections of any interaction I've had with her. Uh, and yeah. I fail to connect the dots sometimes with all these New Mexico families. And I have to say that, I mean, I'm getting old, so, but, but I, I just am not sure that I actually made that firm connection between you and Pam in my own mind, that mm -hmm. you were brother and sister. I'm not sure that that happened until this morning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but well, I'm glad we, that, we've mentioned that, it several times and it and just keeps it won't it just, stick I bet yeah, it sticks yeah, now yeah 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 because uh, yeah, she's a Davis either. and you're a Smith and so but yeah I I just and you're both in two really different parts of my world right like <laughs> I think of her great educator Valencia County and I yeah. think of you and working with James and so but we've never all been together at the same time so I guess no. I just never yeah but never, I bet but, I don't but, forget anymore no I love her we just, everyone just, like I said, we all cross paths. We know different people. You know, I mentioned your friend, Paul, Paul, Paul Santa, using his wedding. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I just talked to him. In fact, I'm, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll uh, be, uh, we're going to have either brunch this afternoon and talk about some issues that we're going to go forward with. And I look forward to meeting him. Meeting him. You know, he seemed like He's a very great. pleasurable guy. And it's going to help me go through some issues. Uh, but that's what it's all about. Like I said, the wisdom that we continue to grow every day in wisdom. 
uh, you listen to, to elders, uh, you learn a lot. Uh, I learn a lot from you. I learn a lot from everyone around us. Uh, you know, you you just you just have to just uh, continue on with that. Uh, now, after we uh, after I graduated from from Eastern New Mexico, came back home, worked in the family business, and learned a lot that through that endeavor. Uh, moved on. Uh, and then I start working in uh, 2006 with Treasure Lewis. I continued on with Treasure Eichenberg uh, in for four oh, years, right. and I retired in 2018. Uh, so I, so I, you know, I had I had a good 12 years at State Treasurer's office. Uh, I had no regrets and met met some fantastic people. We, you know, we had to give credit to state employees. <laughs> Treasurer Lewis always said, it's, it's the weebies. We be here when you get here and we be here when you leave. But That's they are, right. they're, they're dedicated state employees. They work hard for not only themselves. Yes, they, they do work for their family, but they are dedicated state employees that, that, that just go out, some of them go out uh, above and beyond to help uh, the, the taxpayers, uh, citizens of New Mexico. And, and, and we, we can't overlook them. Uh, I, I know I worked hard uh, in knowing a lot of the state employees and, and how how they uh, 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 just went through a lot and going through a lot right now, staying at home, um, have to work from home. I know everyone at the state treasurer's office is doing that. All your employees at the state auditors are all doing that. We have stay at home. And, and do that and they're, they're moving on they're moving on that's exactly uh, right yeah and hey, so, clarence and, do you yeah do you think about you know can i ask you to think about because i think part of us listening and learning from our elders um mm -hmm. and being better better allies and accomplices uh as we grow as a nation and as a community and so many people have helped me do that like dr jennifer gomez chavez who's on this morning and and, and mm. Chad has been a dear friend who's been, been you know, with me for 20 years. Um, yeah, Chad Cooper. My corner cheerleading, yeah. Congratulations, yeah. Chad. Uh, Tillman yeah. celebrating its one year anniversary. Shout out oh, to you great. and the big T, yeah. Good job yeah. on that. And cybersecurity, we talked about cybersecurity this morning a little bit, Chad, uh -huh. so I was in your sector talking about that. But um, let me let me ask you, can you think of some moments in time that maybe you can share so that we can kind of better have context as we try and be good allies and accomplices? Even you in New Mexico, you've got a, a, a father who's a hard worker, electrician, very well respected, works at Sandia. You and Pam on a good educational journey. You mm -hmm. get your bachelor's mm -hmm. in business, come back home, but you still encountered situations that were solely uncomfortable because of the color of your skin. And when um, you look back, I'm sure that yeah. there's got to be some moments of heartbreak because you realize that's exactly what had happened. You know, that, that's, that's, uh, that's something we, <laughs> uh, there is issues, there, there is times that I felt, felt uh, uh, discrimination. There's times I felt racism is involved, but but I I, I take the attitude we we raise above that. Uh, uh, as as First Lady Michelle uh, Obama said, when they go low, we go high. So let's just stay. That's the way I look at it. I'm going to stay up on it. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to achieve the best I can uh, and not. It, it's it's a setback at times, but we just have to move forward. Uh, there's no resting, you know. Uh, just use that John Lewis statement and, and continue on. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I, I just, uh, that's the way I look at life. I just move on. Uh, if, if there's someone that I don't, uh, um, that has that racial intentions, I just don't, I just don't uh, deal with them. Uh, I just move on. So, so that's, that's the way I feel. 
Um, Other than the protests when you're there in Portales, have you ever found that it was strong enough or systemic enough where you said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to create some trouble here, but it's necessary trouble and I'm yeah. going to stand up and I'm going to push back. Have you, what about those times in your life? We, we stood up and pushed back on many occasions. Uh, you know, when, uh, I, I'm glad you brought that up during the NACP, we had a, we had a rally, we had a march from university down here to South Broadway during Nelson Mandela's uh, imprisonment. Uh, and we, we, said well we're gonna go forward with it we're gonna we don't care what's gonna happen we looked up that day and had it organized and met there and man we had we had tons of people out there marching down central avenue we had central avenue we came down south broadway all the way to john marshall uh, uh community center there we had a rally there so we stood up uh not knowing what's gonna happen we we stood up and and we marched. That's our, that's my little protest. We we protested it on several different occasions. Now I haven't. I, I I admit I haven't been to the Black Lives Matter march. I did I did attend when when uh, Rev, Reverend Barber was here when he had a rally for the poor people. For the poor uh, people's uh, campaign. Yeah. Uh huh. I've been to that, and and it was a blessing to see him, to hear him, and he's a strong advocate for the poor people. So, and now yeah, he's a strong orator. He is a strong orator. He will yeah. get you to your feet. In yeah. fact, uh, uh, he and James Lewis are in that rare category of people that can get you to your feet anytime yeah. they anytime. speak. And, and, and James, James knows this is true. I've always told him that the highest compliment anybody could ever pay me is they say, man, you sound a little bit like James Lewis when you're up there. And I always think, man, if I could just sound like one one hundredth of a percent like James Lewis and inspire people one one hundredth of a percent the way James Lewis inspires people and the way the Reverend for the Poor People's Campaign inspires people. Man, I have arrived and I have done well and I have yeah. mission accomplished, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, Brian, you talk about rise to the cage and it, it's several times if you ever get a chance when you're on a tour in the South. Yeah. Go to those those sites. Uh, I had the opportunity to go to Memphis when I was in Memphis one year for the National Baptist Convention. I broke away and went to the Lorraine Hotel. They had just they just finished a big remodel job and and made it a museum, more or less. Uh, how how that happened, and and you know that's where Martin Luther King got assassinated. And and there's right. a book out. There's a book called. Uh, 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 on the Hell, Hellhounds Trail, where it talked about the assassination. Uh, you know, yeah, when he I was, just posted the link to that museum now. Yeah, yeah, and that's that. That's a that's that's a telling story where you you come in, you sit at a little little theater there, and, and you hear uh, how they're portrayed, and then you see these silhouettes, and someone says, "Come, come, come through the civil rights era and see what went on." And you walk all the way through that hotel and everything and, and how, how that was touching uh, and, and how it ended up and, and why he was there in Memphis for, for the garbage collectors. Uh, right. So it was really something. So if you get a chance to go that, get a chance to go right. to Atlanta. I will do that. South. Yeah. And, and I, and I that. hear, you know, I hear that the Selma Pettus Bridge will be renamed John Lewis Bridge. That's going to be coming up. So I, hopefully they, you know, maybe it'll be the Pettus uh, Lewis Bridge or something. Yeah, I, I'd be surprised yeah. if they took the name off. Yeah, they'd be maybe probably the Pettus Lewis. Name. Yeah, right. Uh, um, that is a proposal, and that's that's going to be that's something. Great. That, it's it's that's it's great. it's sad that they won't do it. Be, you know, it's going to be after his death, but but life goes on. So that wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, thank you for pointing that out. I, I've never posted a link to that Civil Rights Museum there in Memphis at the hotel, uh, yeah. but I do want to get there. And I hope, you know, maybe I'll get to take Raphael and uh, Lily and I will go over there. Uh, yeah. and, and I know that it's set up much the way the Holocaust Museum is set up. At the Holocaust Museum, you actually get a essentially a card or a passport and it's yeah. it, it shows a, a person and you don't know what happens to that person until you get to the end. And you yeah. learn whether that person survived yeah. the Holocaust or died yeah. at one of the concentration camps, and and, and it's and, a very similar experience oh, uh, there at is, that Memphis Museum. Is. And 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 it's really it's really uh, uh, heartfelt that when you get the second floor, 
and there's a glass screen that shows you the two rooms that they occupied, one that he was in, Dr. King, and the other one was his lieutenant, still set up the same way it was. And you look out uh, amongst that balcony. Now they cut out that balcony part where he fell. <laughs> and, and Brian, it's still an eerie feeling. Uh, to me, I still seen the blood stain on that on that particular piece, but they cut it out, you know? Uh, and, and, and you see, and then they showed the pictures, how people was pointing up there, you know, uh, uh, where they, now across the street from the Lorraine Hotel, where that boarding house is at, they set it up as a museum too. I didn't go across the street to it, so, because I didn't have time, but I'm, I'm hoping one day I get back there and go, go to it, so. Well, that that'll be good. Thank you for mentioning that because I, mm -hmm. I had never, never, um, never uh, posted that before. Let me just say, as we as we get ready to wrap up on this beautiful Sabido Gigante on yeah. Cafecito con Colón with Clarence L. Smith, former chief of staff to New Mexico State Treasurer James B. Lewis, um, I wanted to let folks know uh, that I'll be going straight from here to a food drive uh, with the Ismali community, a beautiful community that I love. And they are serving Albuquerque. They've got the I Serve mission uh, through the Ismali community. I posted a link to their work. I also posted a link to their address. If you want to drop off some food or necessary supplies, you can join me this morning. I should be there by 10 15 uh, as quickly as I can get out the door here. But their address is, uh, is here on this site uh, over on uh, not Harper, but Venice. Uh, Venice here in the Northeast Quadrant. Uh, but but check that out. If you've got some food supplies you want to bring, uh, the Ismali community is just, they do tremendous work. If you don't know anything about the Ismali community, take some time to look it up. Phenomenal service, outreach. They've got a huge foundation. Uh, I love that community. They do beautiful, beautiful things, and they've engaged me in some very deep and powerful conversations. Uh, so before I give uh, Clarence the last word, because I gave him the first word, where he took us to the scripture, and that was powerful as we listened to our elders as he instructed us to do and 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 learn and grow. Uh, I want to post a link up to my Monday guest, who uh, is really a tremendous human being. Uh, he goes by KJ and the KJ effect. He is a great, great motivational speaker. Uh, I, I think the world to him, I think his positive outlook on life will move you. And I am very, very thrilled that, that he agreed to come on, uh, on on Cafecito con Colón on Monday. I've been a fan of his for quite some time. He's got uh, just a beautiful story to tell. His name's Ken Johnson, and he is a consultant, entrepreneur, professional speaker. He's on the board, I think, for the African American uh, Chamber of Commerce. Chad, uh, you know, help revitalize, get that going. And KJ's on the board. Um, and you know KJ, right, Clarence? You've yeah, heard. yeah, uh huh, uh huh. You know, yeah. you mentioned you mentioned uh, the African American Chamber. I, I was one of the original members back in 1978, I believe. Joe Padrell, uh, uh, and 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 uh, you were like 20 years we're, old, dude. Oh yeah, yeah. We we had we had it going back then. It was kind of <laughs> so so, but we we had it going. I did send you a link also when you talk about a food drive. Uh, you know, Bishop Bishop uh, David C. Cooper has been having a, a, a weekly food drive, vegetables and what's gone. Well, the truck has supposedly broke down earlier this week. It did arrive yesterday, and they did distribute the food. We're going to be having it uh, this afternoon also at noon at the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. Fruit and vegetables, really good box of good stuff. Uh, 1509 Edith, Southeast. And in some other area churches, I just sent you a link to that. It says Friday, the seventeenth, but it is, some churches will be distributing today. But Bishop David C. Cooper, I don't know if you had him on or anything, but he's he is doing. I haven't had Bishop Cooper on yet. I, he has I been doing to. a phenomenal job of getting this food distribution all over. He's he, he's got hooked up with a USDA people, and, and they get that food coming, and, and we get it distributed. I think last week he reported it was 600 cases. He had it distributed amongst seven or eight area churches, all the way to Rio Rancho, uh, all over the place. So, so is that on Edith? 
Is yeah, that 1509 on Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, 1509 Edith. The link okay, is shown just, is several. You, you, I just said you can I, link in several ones. You can see it. There. Okay, good. I, I also posted the address there. And, okay. Uh, and folks yeah. can head over there after at noon today, right? Yeah, it said at, at noon today. So terrific. So so my cafecito friends, if you want to drop off food, do it this morning between 10 and noon. Uh, with the Ismaili community, I posted the link uh, on their uh, Venice address, and it's just a no contact. You open your trunk, we'll get the bag out. Um, we'll do that food collection and distribution. And then if you need to pick up food, or if you have somebody you need to pick up food for, go see uh, Bishop Cooper uh, over at the Macedonian uh, Missionary Church and on Edith, and that's at noon forward. Now, so now, thank you. Now, is correction. Right? Cooper is at New Hope. He, he's at uh, New I'm, Hope in Pennsylvania. Shelby, right? the, no. no, Bishop Cooper, David C. Cooper, Pennsylvania, New Hope, Pennsylvania, and I think uh, Constitution is there. Yeah, Cypher, so your Indian school. Anyway, that's where it's at. Okay. Well, at Macedonia, or where is Macedonia? It? Is my church at 1509 Edith South? And that's East, and that's South where the pickup is this afternoon, right? That, we'll, we'll have a pickup there. And uh, that's Reverend Smith. Reverend Indy Smith, correct, correct. Correct. But Bishop hey. Cooper is an organizer and it starts off at okay, got it. New Hope. Okay. <laughs> so I've got all my black go. I got I I've got all my black church leaders bouncing around in my head right now. I got they're, Cooper they're and there. I got Shelby yep. and I got Smith and I got, uh, got all of them have bent my ear all of them have bent my ear at some point or another trying to set That's me true. straight. That's true. Right? That's true. Yeah. They're, they're, they're all good I'm, people. They're all good people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Clarence, I'm gonna give you the last word on Cafecito con Colon. Why don't you take well, us out? What do you what uh, are you thinking? I I just want to say that I am I'm truly blessed. To have you as a friend, uh, Treasure Lewis, my mentor, uh, as, as a friend and, and colleague, uh, uh, and, and just everyone in my life that has come, that has come and gone, uh, I feel very blessed. We need to stay, we, we all need to just stay prayed up. Uh, we got this pandemic going on. Uh, wear your mask, wash your hands, do what you need to do, and, <laughs> you know, it, 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 we're all in this together. Uh, 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 God has not given up on us yet. We just need to stay prayed up. Uh, uh, and, and that's what I say to everybody. Just stay prayed up. Uh, that's a great we'll last to, word on Cafecito con Colón. We're going to pray up. Uh -huh. We're going to engage. We're going to have, we're, we're going to do some good. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're, we're going to make this place a better place. Yep, sure will. All right. Clarence, God thanks bless. for your love and friendship. God bless All right. you. Okay. We'll thanks, folks, for coming on Cafecito con Colon. Join me again on Monday for the KJ Effect. Clarence is A plus in my book. I'm grateful to every one of you. Reach out to people who are in isolation. Make sure they know they're not alone. Reach out to our elders. Tell them we're grateful. And then listen. Listen as Amen. Clarence and the word says. Listen and learn. God bless each and every one of you. Have a great Sabido Gigante, and thanks for joining us on Cafecito con Colón. God bless right. each and every one of you. Thanks, parents. Bye-bye. Uh, all right. We'll see you later. I'm going off.